So hello and welcome to Motorcycle News and welcome to something very, very special. Uh, we're currently at the 2023 ITMA show in Milan uh, and I'm pretty sure you'll recognise the man to the right of me, uh, MotoGP World Champion, Casey Stoner. So thank you very much. Not a problem, mate. Not uh, a problem at all. Well, yeah, thank you for giving us the time. Appreciate you've come in from the other side of the world and you've been talking all day, but we've got 20 questions that we want to ask you, just for a bit of fun, just to, to find out what you've been up to um, and, you know, maybe uh, put you on the spot with a couple of these. So, uh, so we'll jump straight into it. And and um, first question is, you know, what are you currently riding? What am I currently riding? Um, not too much. The last five years have been a challenge yeah. with chronic fatigue, so I haven't done a whole lot. And uh, I love my off-road riding. So when I got the chance to, um, I have a CRF 450 um, when I get on the motocross track. And then I have a TM 300 uh, two-stroke, which I love for my enduro riding. So. Yeah. That and um, my, my street bike to get around is a um, Triumph Scrambler FC. Oh, FC. great. Oh, so cool. I absolutely love it. Heated grips, got cruise control for those long uh, drawn out trips on the, on the, on the highway. And uh, no, it sort of does everything I want it to do. So it's, oh, uh, nice. it's a good all rounder. It's a great bike, yeah. So, uh, so which living motorcyclist do you most admire? Um, it, I mean, Mick Doohan has been the one for me my entire life he's sort of been that uh shining light i suppose what he had to go through um is so much more and during his career and after his career he's been incredibly successful he's incredibly humble at the same time and uh you know has been a, a great help in my career but then uh behind that i think agostini is is someone that's still to this day i had dinner with him last night and uh still a phenomenal human yeah. being for what he does yeah charisma he has and uh you know we'd all love to be as as uh, as cool as ago absolutely and to still be out on those grand prix bikes as well exactly fantastic and uh so what's your worst habit then on or off the bike um probably over stressing on things yeah um something i've struggled with for, for years and years and even me uh back in the day as soon as i was late even if i was five minutes late i'd, I'd get so stressed over any of that sort of thing so um, you know, I, I struggled massively with anxiety, which I only found out about a couple of years ago. And um, so it's been, it's explained a lot of my yeah. career and where I struggled mm. with certain aspects of not wanting to be uh, recognized, etc. So yeah. that would tense me up and yeah. uh, make me a little sort of, I suppose, more grouchy than I should have been. Yeah. Wow. And um, you've got loads of riding super skills already, but if you could have another one, what would it be? Anything that you've always wanted to be able to do? whatever Tony Bo can do. That's fair enough, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm all right at speed. I know what I'm doing with, with speed, but to have the skill and the control like he's got is just, it's not even a generational talent, it's a multi-generational talent that people have spent years trying to catch up to and they're still not there. And he still keeps raising the bar, doing stuff that just seems inhuman. Yeah, absolutely. So um, no, whatever he's got, I want. It's just incredible, isn't it? It is phenomenal. Yeah. So uh, so what's the fastest you've ever ridden? Fastest I've ever been on a bike, I think, was about 358, 360. Um, I had a test by myself in Qatar. Wow. So on a dirty, slippery track. And, um, yeah, so I think in race conditions, coming out of the corner a heck of a lot faster and then getting yeah. a toe, I, I, I'd get considerably a lot faster than that. But that's still um, still pretty quick. Uh, just a bit, yeah. Uh, so uh, when was the last time you were scared on a bike? May well have even been then. Last time I was scared on a bike? Um, probably last time I rode. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that I don't believe uh, people truly understand is that uh, we always ride with fear no matter how good you are. Mm. The ones that don't ride with fear are dangerous. Yeah. Um, so fear is what keeps us in check and keeps us, you know, um, alive I suppose oh, yeah. so it's learning how to deal with it and how to uh, use it to your advantage but yeah I'd say almost uh, every time you get on a bike there's especially these ones that are that quick yeah. there's always a, 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 a little bit of fear whether it's brakes failing whether it's front end doesn't feel real good um, getting high sided you know there's all sorts of things that you've been through in your career and there's mm. always just that little bit in the back of your mind that uh, makes you second guess oh yeah, you've got to respect it and correct yeah. uh, so so how many uh, how many miles did you ride last year not much oh right um, I would have only done three days on a motocross bike 
Really? Um, and that's it. So I've really struggled the last five years with chronic fatigue and, and uh, yeah, motorbike riding was the last thing I could do. Yeah, yeah. I was barely getting out of bed, let alone get on a bike. Right. So. Wow. Um, well, from that to, you know, what, what's the most amount of miles you've ever done in a day? Um, it'd actually be a good question. I don't know whether it'd be testing and doing, you know, 100 plus laps. I'd have to calculate that versus probably uh, when I did a, a big adventure bike trip just before I got to chronic fatigue uh, in the northern part of Australia and we were riding non-stop all day. I don't know, we might have done somewhere 800 to 1,000 K in the day. Wow. Uh, depending on, on dirt roads as well. So it's not like you just cruise along on highways. It yeah, was rough yeah, yeah. dirt roads and yeah. takes a bit more concentration with big um, semi-trailers and trucks coming past the other way that sort yeah. of engulf you in dust. So the, the stress levels are a little bit higher. But yeah, I, I wouldn't know uh, the exact distance we, we did yeah. in one day. Yeah, well, that'll do. Uh, <laughs> so what irritates you most on a bike? And that could, um, be, that could be the bike, you or other people. A bike that doesn't turn when I get on the throttle, on the, the first sort of five, 10% of the throttle, I want a bike that basically as soon as I get that should load the rear and then we should be able to start turning a little bit if it just pushes the front. It's something that um, doesn't suit at all my riding style. Mm. I want a bike that turns in and starts to come underneath me a little bit so I can pick the bike up and that's frustrating. That and gearboxes. If I get on a bike and the gearbox and clutch isn't nice to ride with, mm. then that's frustrating to me. So yeah. when, uh, when I went from one bike to another bike and one bike felt like an you know, a, a electric sewing machine, it was so smooth, and the other yeah. bike felt like a, uh, you know, a 1970 125 <laughs> and the gearbox was a bit clunky, it's a massive difference. So yeah. smooth gearbox and clutch for me is really important. Fantastic. Well, we're halfway through. Uh, question 10 then, you've got two weeks. Uh, you can go anywhere. Where are you going? probably have to spend a week in each spot but i'd say um japan to do a bit more exploring yeah yeah absolutely love it over in japan uh find the culture and everything amazing there uh, yeah great great question probably somewhere in northern america yeah um colorado wyoming montana that sort of thing um i love being out in the wilderness yeah and you know between bears and mountain lions and, and everything else that's around there, it's just, it feels like it's a bit of the last frontier. Yeah, it's And it's, great, um, yeah, some beautiful places up there. Yeah, absolutely stunning. And um, so, any pearls of wisdom for new riders? Um, pride is your worst enemy. Yeah. Um, I would say, be willing to learn and, and decide who to learn from. Yeah. Uh, you can very easily listen to the wrong person and get uh, pushed in a direction that's going to be the wrong way just because they think they know something. Yeah. And pride is your worst enemy because uh, the biggest thing that holds people back is pride and the fact that they'll blame the bike, they'll blame the conditions, they'll blame everything but themselves. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you should blame yourself for everything, but it certainly means that you should hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more you can improve in yourself, the more uh, unlimited um, your, your potential is. If you blame the bike, the bike is never going to get to that point for you consistently. So I think um, pride is, is probably the worst enemy of most riders. Right, I see. And uh, uh, in the same vein, have you ever fallen off anywhere really embarrassing? Um, trying to think now. <laughs> I guarantee it. I'm trying yeah. to think of which one was embarrassing. <laughs> Um, not a big one comes to mind, but the most one that I was, I was the most gutted about was uh, I was leading the race in 04 in Hareth in the rain by a mile. We, yeah. we had the race won in KTM, would have been his first win. Um, and I came out of a corner and took it super safe, got as far away from a lapper as I could didn't realize the water was like six, eight inches deep and it just spat me and that was it. I didn't even get to finish the race. So, and we were only a few laps away from the win. Similar thing happened in Phillip Island in 03, but we had a brake failure there. The disc uh, overheated and locked the rear reel yeah. up. So, but uh, that one in Hareth hurt me a lot yeah. because everything was sit there lined up for us. And uh, 
as much as it was a mistake on my part, I also hadn't put a foot wrong. Yeah. I didn't over accelerate. I didn't push too hard. It was just trying to avoid a lapper and be smart about it. Yeah, and yeah. I ended up putting myself in a bad place in the track, yeah. which I didn't know there was water. So yeah. that, um, that one hurt. The massive. I mean, fortunately, you got to win a few more after that. Correct. <laughs> it all seems pretty dire at the time. Um, I was never set on winning, you know, the lower category championships. It was never where my goal was. Yeah. But, of course, it's all part of the stepping stone. So it's, uh, it would have been a nice, important win. Yeah. And uh, all my other opportunities later in the season that we should have won, we had bike failure after bike failure after bike failure. Yeah. And then eventually got one. But, uh, but yeah, it was... That was my opportunity then, yeah. but uh, we missed out on it. Absolutely. So have you uh, got one indispensable piece of riding kit? Um, I wouldn't say so. I am fussy with, with gloves and, uh, and boots. Yeah. They have to be right. Um, even leathers and things like that. I get um, my, my set in 2011, I... I think I won eight of my 10 or 11 races yeah. with one set. Oh, right. Um, my, my team manager came in late in the season and said, please, you know, change the letters. <laughs> They're looking like crap. And he said, mate, they've already won seven races or six so, races. He was like, okay, they can stay. Yeah. So I'm not, I didn't stay with them because I'm superstitious. I just, yeah. they're bedded in, they're comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't want to change and they're lasting. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was, but yeah, hands and feet are, are pretty critical for me. Yeah. But, um, Helmets, the one thing that I've always been pretty happy with, Nolan, I could put on any one of those helmets. I always felt the same and yeah. they felt great. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you got, uh, you, you're going on the Sunday Blast. You can invite three people. Who's coming with you? Eerie. Good question. <laughs> um, probably the two people I went up to, um, up to Cape York with. Yeah. Um, my cousin Mark and a mate of mine, Greg, they're good, sort of dependable people that yeah. stop when we want to stop. Nobody's in a hurry to get anywhere else. Yeah. Um, they know how to relax when they need to yeah, and yeah. they're capable enough riders to sort of go where we need to go. So it's, um, yeah, it was a good crew, good yeah. group. Yeah. A third one on there at all? Or? Um, trying to think between a few because some of them are, are fantastic riders, a little bit more impatient. I would say I'd have to add four then, probably Leon Camier and Chaz Davies. Nice. Um, sort of, I was thinking more only in Australia because yeah. that's where I'm, I'm going to be. But uh, yeah, if I could choose anyone, um, it'd be those boys. So. Brilliant, brilliant. And is there a tool that you can't live without? I have board drawn on it. They'll pull the off. They'd probably be three. Okay. Um, Pliers, duct tape, and um, zip ties. Well, you can fix anything with that. Well, it sounds a bit <laughs> wrong, but you really, I mean, the amount of one to five races that we, we finished because we had those those mm. things, drill a few holes in the fairings and put some zip ties through it to keep yeah. it together. Uh, a bit of duct tape over the top to stop all the, uh, you know, fiberglass fibers sticking out everywhere. I mean, you can you can literally get to the end of any race yeah, with yeah. that stuff. So it's, uh, it's all you need. Super stuff. And uh, do you adjust your own suspension? Uh, yes, yeah. quite, um, especially on the motocross bike. On the yeah. road bike, I'll get it to a point where I'm just happy enough, yeah. and then that'll be fine, as long as it's not bottoming and a couple of other things. Uh, motocross bike, I'd love to have a, a, a better set of suspension than what I've ever had, because every time I've tested factory bikes, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, yeah. I need this, um, because the range is so much bigger that it works yeah. in, whereas um, the stuff I generally ride is stock, and for my weight, it's not ideal. Yeah. So it gets a little tricky trying to get those yeah, yeah, things yeah. set up for someone that weighs 60 yeah. kilos. I can imagine, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And um, if, uh, if you could have any of your old bikes back, uh, racing or otherwise, is there anyone out there? Um, I would say the Aprilia 250 from 2005. Um, and probably my 2012 uh honda which yeah. i felt like i should have kept that one because i felt like i should have won that championship without the injury and uh yeah so that's that's a bit sad that i didn't get to get that one it was the favorite bike when uh when they didn't change the tire construction on us that was by far the best bike i ever rode in my life it did everything right and um yeah it was really enjoyable to ride and the aprilia 250 is just they're a work of art i want the carbon wheels on it though yeah. we only got to use those on race day but 
the carbon wheels were, uh, were beautiful. It, was, it wasn't particularly nice to ride, yeah. but it was effective. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that was a great bike. It looked lovely in the living room as well, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. All the Carrera <laughs> stuff. Yeah, fantastic. So um, is there a bike you'd never buy? Um, yes, but I won't say them. Okay. <laughs> um, I try not to buy four strokes, to be honest. Yeah. Um, even though I still have them and it's the way it is, I'm an absolute two stroke nut fan. Love them. I've got a 93 KX500, I've got a 96 CR500, oh. 2007 CR250. Um, like I said, I've got the TM300. Yeah. Um, two strokes are where my, my whole career was built on. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. I love about racing, the artistry of it, not only tuning them, riding them, the feeling you get out of them. Uh, people don't even know what they're missing out on until they go and ride a two-stroke yeah, again. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, these, these enjoyments come back. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like eating foods that have been heavily pesticided for years, and then you go and eat something organic and go, oh, that's what it used to taste like. It's, <laughs> it's pretty much like that for me. Yeah, fantastic. And if you had a desert island, what uh, what road or racetrack would you have built on there? Um, I'd want a track longer than Phillip Island, but you can't really go past Phillip Island, just as long as it didn't bring the wind with it and the <laughs> rain and all that. Uh, Phillip Island is phenomenal, but it'd have to be a hybrid between Phillip Island and Bruno. I would say if I had to have a track there to ride and drive and do everything you wanted to all the time, probably Bruno. Nice. Massive circuit, yeah. beautiful in the countryside like it was. It was it was unreal to ride, but yeah. uh, in terms of enjoyment, Phillip Island is where it's at. Fantastic. And uh, last question, uh, and I think it's a good one. If you could rule the world, what law would you pass? Oh, that is a good one. Um, keep left unless overtaking or <laughs> uh, right in Europe um, one law would I pass maybe a common sense law common sense um, law. let's go with that it okay. covers a bit Okay. It's, well, it's, uh, there's a bit of wiggle room in there okay uh, I think I get the gist but, uh, <laughs> but look thank you very much for doing this and uh, hopefully now you can get a bit of rest and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this as well. Uh, if you have, remember to give us a like and a subscribe while you're here. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.